YouTube. What's good, guys? It's your boy TD, and I'm back again with another live, guys. And today's live is going to be on five bounce back wide receivers that you must draft in your 2024 leagues, guys. Listen, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. This is cutting edge content. I said what I said. This is cutting edge content. So, guys, with no further ado, let's begin. Let's get on my five guys that you should be targeting that's going to have a bounce back season. So, this is no particular order. You know, I don't usually do an order or ranking per se, but uh, I'm going to see who we're going to start with today. Let's start with Deontay Johnson. Let's start with Deontay Johnson. So, listen, in 2019, guys, as you see right here, he played, he started 12 games and had 92 targets, 680 yards, and five TDs. That's a great rookie season. Guy was killing it. We thought breakout potential, everything. So he comes into the next year as the number one guy in 2020 and kills it again. Uh, but he only he got hurt. He only started 13 games, but he had 144 targets, which is that's a lot of value. 88 receptions, 923 yards, and his touchdowns went up from five to seven. Great job. Great job. So we know Deontay can catch balls. He's a valiant guy. Then he goes into 2021 and has an even better season. And he has he's, he started 14 games, 162 targets, 107 receptions. That's over 100 receptions, 1,100 yards, guys, in the third season. So he's been getting better with 10.9 yards per reception and eight TDs. So you know this guy's training to be a good wide receiver. Now the next year, the quarterback changed, Big Ben retired, and things went a little bit away, and he lost focus or whatever. But he got a new deal and things of that nature. But I believe, guys, that Deontay Johnson playing for the Carolina Panthers is going to have another breakout season uh, like he did – his first couple years in the league. And the reason why is because, guys, this guy can get open in a phone booth. This guy is one of the best route runners in the league. Now, his focus sometimes goes away. That's why he drops a lot of balls. I don't think he has bad hands, but I don't think he focuses all the time. I believe with this guy uh, – yeah, sorry about that, guys. I believe with this guy focusing and having a new beginning – and with Bryce Young getting the ball out quicker, because that's why the new coaches came in, Bryce Young cannot hold on to the ball. When he's hold, holding on to the ball, turnovers are happening. The offense is not running, running smoothly, smoothly. I believe he is better than Adam Thielen. So I believe Deontay Johnson, guys, is going to get 100 catches this year and be a top 24 fantasy football wide receiver. Now, top 24 is just his floor. He could be top 12, depending on how this offense flows. But I love Deontay Johnson this year, guys. Make sure you look to pick him up. Guys, make sure you hit the like button. Uh, I see D-Lion. Deion says, won't be here when the live starts, but Marvin Mims Jr. with J Judy gone. Depends on who the quarterback is. Yes, I love Marvin Mims Jr. this year. He should get more opportunities, especially with Jerry Judy being gone and maybe have a better quarterback play. Uh, Isaac says, last night took an L, but tonight I bounced back. Yes, sir, bro. That's what life is about. The bounce back. Yes, sir. Big Will in the house. What's up, bro, bro? Always showing support. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. All right, let's move on, guys, to my next guy. And this guy's going to be Chris Godwin. Yes, guys, Chris Godwin. Well, listen, we know what he was with Tom Brady and Jameis Winston. Look at that 2017 rookie season. Pretty good season coming out of Penn State. Look at him in 2018. Still balling. Still had a good season. Went from one touchdown to seven. Then 2019 breakout season, 1,300 yards, nine TDs, 86 receptions. 2020, another. I mean, this guy could play. Now, he got into, as in 2023, I thought he could have had a, a better season. In 2022, he was coming off an injury. Now, I believe this year, guys, he's going to be more solid. This guy can play. 
Um, Baker Mayfield was starting to target this guy down the stretch in your fantasy football leagues. He started having really good games in your fantasy football playoffs. I'm targeting the guy because of his value this year, where he's going. Now, listen, guys, I know a lot of you keep, keep you might say, well, TD, I'm not targeting players. Well, I'm not targeting guys either. That's not how I draft. But if when somebody falls to a certain slot where I feel comfortable with the ADP, I'm drafting them. So I want to make sure y'all understand that. I'm not going in there with, I got to get this guy, I got to get this guy, I got to get this guy. I'm willing to take anybody. I don't care how bad you are. At the right value, all players are good. There are players that suck, but that can win you a championship one week. All it takes is one week. So I just want y'all to understand that. I'm not targeting anybody, but it's about value. So I'm not going to take Chris Godwin in the second round because I want him. But if he falls to me in the fifth or fourth round, and I went zero or uh, well, I went um, yeah, zero RB or robust RB. And he's the best wide receiver on the board. I'm taking the guy. I'm taking him. I, I love Chris Godwin this year. Um, this is a gonna be the high target type offense. Baker Mayfield is going to be getting the ball out to Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. So I love Chris Godwin this year. Also, guys, um, I want to talk to you a little bit before I move on to my next player about my rookie, my some of my rookie targets, and I do comparisons. And I think some of you actually think I'm comparing these guys to exactly what I'm saying. Like, if I say a guy is going to be Chris Johnson, you actually think this guy's going to rush for 2K. Come on, guys. Stop it. And I'm not talking about my loyal subscribers. A lot of you know what I'm talking about. But a lot of you, I see some comments be like, wow, you actually think this guy, well, this is crazy. Like, crazy. Guys, it's a comparison. So if somebody say, hey, that girl right there look like Holly Berry. She ain't Holly Berry. He, I'm, he just saying she looked like Holly Berry. So that's what I'm saying, guys. So when I say Jalen Wright reminds me of Chris Johnson, he's not Chris Johnson. He's not probably going to have 2K. He could have 300 yards his whole career. I don't care. But when you see him play coming out of college, you have to put a comparison on him. How many people have we said that reminds us, uh, reminds us of Michael Jordan? Harold Miner, uh, Julius Hodge. These guys didn't have no luxuries. A professional career, but they look like Michael Jordan at certain times on the floor. Same thing about my comparisons when I say a guy. Don't get stuck on a comparison. So if I say a guy reminds me of Barry Sanders, don't say, ah, Barry Sanders, he's going to have 2,000 yards? No, that's not what I'm saying. So I just want to make sure we on the same page when I do my comparisons. Ian Taylor to TV put in that work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Make sure you hit the like button subscribe to this channel. This is Cutting Edge Content. Yes, sir. Y'all see the Duke Blue Devils. We got our win yesterday. Yes, sir. From North Carolina. Yes, sir. I see you, Stacy. I see you. Yes, yeah, sis, sis. I think I'm going I'm to say sis, sis. Like I do, bruh, bruh. Sis, sis. What's going on, Harambe? What's up, bruh, bruh? Always showing support. Appreciate you, bruh, bruh. Always showing support. Guys, make sure you um, hit me up at my Gmail and, and just put in, let me know, like, hey, TD, I'm, I'm going to want that uh, draft guy. Just to, so I can get a little, um, um, take a little tally of who's going to be wanting that draft guy. That draft guy is going to be fire, guys. Going, I promise you. I'm I, Guys, I'm pretty sure 75 or 80% of the people who dra get that draft guy is going to go to the playoffs and have a chance to win a fantasy football championship. I already know. It, because the players that I had last year and a lot of you guys to pick them up, you all went deep into your playoffs. All was number one seeds and number two seeds. With Tyreek Hill, Amara St. Brown, that type of pickup tour, that type. You gonna, So I got, I'm not saying it's the same as that players, but my players for this year. So make sure you get that. So let's move on to my third wide receiver, guys. Yes, sir. Appreciate that, bro, bro. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Don't got all the bells and whistles, but I do believe in my content. You know, uh, real quick before I move on to the third wide receiver, I, you know, guys, I'm not above criticism, but I sometimes I see guys, hey, man, yeah, man, you're getting better. Are you talking about my content? Because my content had is second to none. Or are you talking about my bells and wheels? Are you talking about my background drop, uh, the way my videos are being edited? Remember, this is YouTube. Nobody's do, nobody blog YouTube like I do where I be in my car talking about players. A lot of guys do it from their um, studio, right? But I'm vlogging. That's my niche. I ain't finishing good sports. I ain't trying to. I ain't trying to be 
perfect. I ain't trying to be ESPN. I'm trying to give you ESPN content out of my mouth, the players that I'm on. That's why I want to be held accountable for. And listen, even my my words might not come out uh, in the correct pronunciation. I'm from the country. That don't got nothing to do with my IQ. That's I'm from the country. That's it's, it's a difference. Uh, intelligence comes in all different shapes and sizes. All right. So let's get on, guys. Let's get on. Let's move on to my next guy. My next guy is Jalen Waddle. Yes, sir. Jalen Waddle, guys. Now listen, 2021, this guy had a great rookie receiver. I mean, rookie uh wide receiver uh season. Tar he had 140 targets and started all 16 games healthy. 104 receptions. I mean, he killed it as a rookie as a smaller wide receiver. Now, the reason why I like speed wide receivers is because you can't hit him anymore. Back in the day, guys, Jalen Water would have to be like a third wide receiver because Ray Lewis would knock him out. If he came across the middle, as soon as he come across the middle, even if he don't get the ball, if he underneath five yards, Ray Lewis is going to take a shot at him. You can't do that anymore. So that's why I like speed wide receivers and because I believe they can win you weeks. They, they can get big plays. Uh, 30 point, 40 point, 30 point, 40 point, 30 point, 40 point, 30 point, 40 point. So listen. Okay, so Jalen Water killed as a rookie. Then the second season with Tyreek Hill balled out. 1,356 yards with an 18.1 yards per reception. I love the 18 point yard per reception with 75 receptions. That's those are the guys that get to thought upon fought upon. But the guys look right like the more receptions you get, usually, unless you Tyreek Hill or Jamar Chase or Justin Jefferson, usually you're not gonna have big plays. Big plays win your fantasy weeks. A 70-yard touchdown could be 18 points, right? Or, But if you get like eight targets and you catch six of them for 75 yards, that's a good week, but that's not 30 point, 40 point. 30 point, 40 points comes with big plays. Remember when DK Metcalf went for 55 points last year? He had two 70-yard touchdown bombs. He only had like six catches, but he had like two of them was for 70-yard plus. So I like a, a wide receiver who can go to for 18 yards per reception the whole season. And you on the other side of Tyree. That's another little little thing that I like. I like you to be the I like number two wide receivers that got monster number one wide receivers. So going into 2023, guys, he was hurt. You, a lot of I, I don't like Jalen Water. Water, guys, Water got me to the championship because he gave me certain weeks to help me. He everybody's not gonna ball out every single week for you. So 2023, he was hurt. He only started 14 games, as you can see. And one of those games, I don't even know if he finished. He, so I love Jalen Waddle, guys. Jalen Waddle is, to me, guys, with, at his value, you you killing. This is an elite offense. Now, a lot of people like number two wide receivers like I do, like T. Higgins, Devontae Smith, uh, Jalen Waddle. I like Jalen Waddle. Over T. Higgins. T. Higgins is a solid wide receiver, but I he ain't to me don't ain't 30 point 40 points. He ain't catching a slant for five yards and taking it 80 yards to the crib. That's why y'all be like, why you don't like T. Higgins? Because I like those type of guys. That's why I've been on Tyreek Hill over Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase. Now Jamar Chase got that in him a little bit, but he ain't got it like Tyreek does. So that's what those are the guys that that's why I've been on Tyreek. I don't know why anybody else who's telling you to draft Tyreek Hill, because I've been doing I know so. I've been on Tyreek Hill for about five, six years. A lot of people say, well, we all know about Tyreek. I don't want to hear that on my channel because I was on him when nobody else was on him. People would draft him in the third round. They said I was crazy for taking him early. I've been taking Tyreek Hill in the first round for over year, for years here. So I like guys with big plays. Jalen Water, you can't get a better wide receiver on a better offense with a better offensive coordinator. You better hope they're in the cold weather when it comes to the fantasy football playoffs. If they in Miami, uh-oh. If they in Miami, you are in trouble. So, guys, uh, Jalen Water, great breakout, uh, uh, not breakout, but a great wide receiver to draft with his value this year. Great. I'm taking him if he come to me. Especially, I want to get that Tyree Kill tour Jalen Water stack every single year. If I can get that stack, uh-oh, I'm taking it. All right. Let's move on to my fourth wide receiver, guys. Let's move on to my fourth wide receiver, and it's Jahan Dotson. Yes, Jahan Dotson. And the reason why, guys, I love Jahan Dotson, he's a great route runner. And his value is going to be stupid this year. Like, he's going to be going in, like, the eighth round in most leagues. 
Now, the thing that worries me and w- what happened last year is the quarterback play. Sam Howell's not a bad quarterback, but he didn't want to target Jahan Dotson. That's why Eric B. Enemy got fired, if you ask me. Eric B. Enemy would probably never get a head coaching job, and that's a shame. After all the, the things that he did in Kansas City, and he also had a decent year in Washington, he just he spreads the ball around too much. It's too thin. You got to go to your guy. You got to make your guy either make him or break him. You got to go. You got to tell Sam Howell, listen, we're going to Jahan. you going to Curtis. Listen, Curtis ain't a bad player. Curtis. Curtis Samuel is not a bad player, but you don't build your offense around Curtis Samuel. Like you, you add him as a piece and you use him as a hybrid. You don't build your offense. You build your offense around Jahan Dotson and Terry McLaurin. And he just spread the ball out like he got Pat Mahomes and stuff. Like he got Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey out there, and we got a bunch of weapons, and we can win any type of way. No, that's not – you got to be able to focus in on your best wide receivers or your best players. Those are the great uh, offensive coordinators. Look at Sean McVay. Sean McVay, he con- concentrates on his guys. Puka Nakua was drafted in the fourth or fifth round, and this guy got concentrated targets of 13, 14, 15, 16 targets a game. And you got Eric B. Enemy giving Jahan Dotson two targets a game. That's why he got fired. But anyway, I love Jahan Dotson. I think this new regime that's coming into Washington going to make sure that Jahan Dotson is getting targeted at least seven to eight times a game. So at his value where he's going after the sixth or seventh round, he, you're going to be the kid. This guy's very talented. You got to chase the talent. That's one thing about my channel. I chase the talent. I chase the talent. I know a lot of you be like, well, TD, what about this guy? I'm going to trust my talent. Like, listen, I, I was wrong on Daniel Jones, Antonio Gibson, and A.J. Dillon, per se, from last year. But I'm still picking up those guys when they on the waivers or when I'm start doing startup dynasties because I like the talent. And guess what? When they hit, it's not going to be that I got lucky. It's just I stayed with the course. It's just like a stock. It's just like stock. You know, Bitcoin was $20,000, $10,000, went down to almost $10,000. I didn't get off of it because, oh, it did bad this year. I was like, no, I trust in Bitcoin. I know it's going to hit. And bam, it's it's $70,000 right now. Up and down, right? Around $70,000, $65,000 right now. So that's how I tell tell y'all about my players. When I see you guys in the rookie draft, I'm telling you to go off talent because talent prevails. So a guy might not get the opportunity, but that don't mean he's talented. So, I love Jahan Dotson this year, guys. One of the best route runners in the league. He attached the ball in the air as a 5'10 guy. I think his mind was also was warped because they wasn't feeding him. Um, he just out of touch with what was going on, right? And I think this new regime is going to be better for him. Randall says, are you jumping in any big boy drafts today? Uh, what you mean by big boy drafts, uh, Randall? Glad to see you here, bro, bro. What you mean by big boy giraffes? Because I do got some um guys, and I got to do more of this, and I apologize. I've been doing very well on FanDuel and the DraftKings with the new – because they allow, they allow betting now in North Carolina. And I've been doing very well with that. But I don't – guys, I, I don't have the time. That's I, that's why I can't wait to do this full time. That way I can be able to give y'all my picks every week before – like before, this, before the start time of games. Like telling y'all to pick this team, pick that team, pick that team uh underdog drafts uh yes i will be doing some underdog drafts bro bro in nba i haven't been doing so the ones the big money ones where you can win like nine thousand dollars for first place that's hard to hit um but far as the the over and unders with the rebounds and points and stuff like that i've been doing okay i've been going like four out of five um if i can go if i just could pick two or three guys i probably get hit more but i usually um i like to go for the money and those so i usually pick in a five parlay uh with that but yes, uh, Randall, if you want me to do one, I can. I can uh, maybe do one later on tonight. Uh, Big Will says, someone put me on Bitcoin investing in general. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, let's go on to my next guy, guys. Appreciate everybody being here. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. This is cutting edge content. This is cutting edge content. All right. Okay, this is my fifth and final guy. And it's Kristen Watson. It's Kristen Watson. Now, listen, I know a lot of you might not be on Kristen Watson, and I respect that. But I want you to know what this guy is. This is not a Justin Jefferson 
15 targets, Cooper Cup type guy. This is a boom guy. This is a guy that you put in as your wide receiver three or fletch play, and he booming you in the week. That's what he is. And I drafted him early in some startup dynasty leagues last year, knowing that's what he is, knowing that he could be hurt, and knowing that he's not a great route runner. And his hands is not exceptional. I don't care because when he – you see what he did as a rookie. He had seven touchdowns. He broke records. Look at his yards per reception, 14.9. Now, I'm not saying that's a master stat where every time you see somebody with over 11 or 12 yards per reception that they're going to be a boom guy. But this type of guy where he's drafted in the second round with a team that philosophy like that, I like this type of guy. So 66 targets, 41 receptions. This guy can win you a league, win your league. Last year, guys, his rookie season, I had him, and he he had a great season with Aaron Rodgers, where he had like seven touchdowns and like five, like four weeks. And Gary Wilson is supposed to be this better better talent and all this, but they not more they not more explosive than he is. I like explosive wide receivers. Now, listen, don't get it twisted. I will draft a Justin Jefferson or Gary Wilson type for the if if everything fits. But I'm not going to draft these guys that are just great pure route runners. Listen, that's why Marvin Harrison is not my number one wide receiver. I'm not saying he's not going to be that he's going to be a bad wide receiver. I think he's going to be a great wide receiver as his career goes on. But he's not super explosive. Super explosive guys who can ball out early as a rookie because you can outrun your the defense when you are a route runner. The defense can put their hands on you, and it's hard for you to get open. Because these guys are savvy. they stronger. But when you fast, you just can beat them with your youngness and your athletic ability. And that's what Christian Watson is. If he can stay healthy, guys, it, even if he don't, because his value is that good, if you can draft a guy like Christian Watson in the late, late rounds and he and he stays healthy, he's definitely a pure league winner. Listen, guys, anybody could be a league winner. It's all different forms of league winners. It's guys that can have two great weeks that can be league winners for you in the playoffs. It's guys that can ball all season long that can be league winners. It's guys that can ball for you week five, six, and seven, and when you win those weeks and get into the playoffs, and those guys was league winners. So it's all different types of league winners. I believe that uh, Christian Watson is a type of league winner where the, all you playing him is for the boom, and if you don't boom, you don't lose. A lot of you don't understand about, oh, he gave me five points. Who gives a damn? I don't give a damn if a guy can score five points. No, man, if he five points and he can't, he can't, he ain't fast and he ain't getting no deep targets. Now, hell no, he ain't in my lineup. But if you are giving me five points, but they missed on you for two deep balls, I don't give a damn. Because if they have connected, uh-oh, week over, I won. Regroup. I'm trying to win. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get rich off Bitcoin. I'm not trying to go put it in put it in a safe uh stock and make five, ten dollars every year. I'm trying to get rich. I'm trying to win. If you want to win, put Christian Watson in. If you want to win, put Christian Watson in. Okay. Let me see here. Ozzy says, UNC all the way. Yes. I, I feel you. I like UNC. You know, I'm a Duke fan, you know, but UNC got a great team. We're not better than them this year. But we can win any game. This is college basketball. I, we we good enough to win any game, and that's that's how college basketball works. Winning a series in the NBA is different than winning one game. So we can win. Um, we could beat you. I want I want to see Duke and UNC in the championship. But all right, guys. So my five guys. I want to go ahead and tell y'all. It's Jahan Dotson, Kristen Watson, Deontay Johnson. Chris Godwin and Jalen Waddle. Those are my five bounce back wide receivers that you need to be paying attention to pick up this year if you want to win a championship. There's going to be other guys out there that can be bounced back, but these are uh, guys um, that I see that you I got to talk about. So, guys, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to this channel. This is cutting edge content. Um, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Uh, go get me something to eat. Um, I, I fast through the mornings, I don't usually eat to about Shoot, sometimes five, six o'clock, but today I'm at home, so I'm going to eat a little bit earlier. Uh, anything y'all want to put in the comment let, in the comment section before I get out of here?
Stan Steves, is Jalen Water is considered a bounce back player? Yes. Right. He is. He still didn't really have a bad year. He's I, I did bounce back because I know a lot of you was disappointed in what he did. And I wasn't. I understand the guys that I get disappointed in usually are my first and second round picks. Anybody after that, man, I'm not disappointed in you, really. I'm not disappointed in you, really, because I just know how fantasy works. Like, if you drafted Jamar Chase in the first round, you probably was disappointed because that cost you the lead. Not that Jamar Chase is bad, but he just didn't give you the output. So you got to hold your first, second round players, sometimes third round players, accountable. The rest of the guys, man, they volatile. They volatile. You're just trying to get a boom out of them from week to week basis. That's what this fantasy is about. It's about that boom. It's not about that safeness. You, it's only two or three players that that can give you thirty points, or twenty points every week. That's Justin Jefferson, that's CMC, um, and this year it was Tyreek Hill. Very few quarterbacks can give you thirty points every single week. Josh Allen had a couple weeks, about four weeks out of the whole season where he gave you like fourteen points, but then other weeks he boomed. Harambe says making eggs right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Stan C says top of the morning. Yes, sir, bro, bro. Yes, sir. G D L T. What's up, bro, bro? Appreciate you too, man. Long time. I ain't seen you. Uh, I think this is the first time I seen you this year, bro, bro. Appreciate you always showing support to the channel. Uh, guys, I really love. I, I got straight up loyal subscribers. I might not have no 30, 40,000, 30,000, 40,000, but I got about. 20 guys, 25 guys that all, all my videos, they always liking it or disliking it. And I'm okay with that. You don't, you shouldn't like everything that I say. If you like everything I said, then I wouldn't be doing my job. If you think Andy Reid, you think his general manager agree with everything that he wants? Do you think Bill Belichick and Robert Kraft agree with everything that they wanted to do? Do you think Jimmy Johnson and, and uh, Jerry Jones agreed on everything? Do you think that Michael Jackson and his producers agreed on every single thing. Do you think Elvis Presley agreed with every single thing with his managers? No, guys, greatness don't agree. But iron sharpens iron. Occam, uh, Occam razor, Occam's razor. That's what I'm about. I'm about being cutting edge but simple. And what makes me cutting edge? It's very simple, and it's almost so simple it makes people throw up. If a lot of people don't like my content, guys, they don't. They, uh, what, 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 why he didn't put the name here? The, no, there's certain things that I will do that you need for content, but I'm not sitting around making no three hour, four hour video and editing it just to tell you to play Jalen Waddle. That's not YouTube, that's that's ESPN TV. They don't want need the background. Everyone can't be in their bedroom making a video. I can, and ESPN then took it there. They got guys that be at home sometimes. So that, that's, you know, I'm, it's Occam Razor, keeping it simple, but it's cutting edge. Because a lot of people are like, what? Tyreek Hill? No, yes, he, he, he'll he boom guy, play him, number one wide receiver. And he hit. Nobody was on that. A lot of people, ah, was something, some people are like, well, I like, no, I said he's the best wide receiver. He's the one of the best wide receivers ever in the history of the game. And I'm going to stand on that. I'm going to stand on that. Stan Steve says, I thought he had a good year last year. I did too. I thought um, Jalen Water had a great season. A lot of people didn't believe it. I'm like, guys, what you expect? Everybody can't, like, be crazy good. Now, if he go out there dropping balls and stuff and he looks like he might get cut, like kind of like Deontay. Deontay had some games where you like, yeah, yeah. like, But Jalen Water had a way better had a way better career than Deontay Johnson. And this year, Deontay Johnson is going to be it. I love Deontay Johnson, guys. He's going to get be bombarded with targets. You got to go with the trend. Carolina is trying to pick up some good wide receivers. Deontay's going to be pepper. That's what um, Bryce Young needs, guy. He needs to be said, hit, bam, get the ball out. That's what makes me, like, that's why I'm on Deontay. A lot of people might not see football the way I see it. But as me as a coach, if I'm building Bryce Young, what do I want? I, want, I don't want him taking sacks. He don't need to be getting sacked from the backside at 195 pounds, and he's only 6'1", 6'2". Well, he might be like six foot. So I want him to, boom, run around, get out the pocket, make a play. 
I want the ball out quick. Deontay Johnson, I knew when I said, oh, guys, I thought about this like two or three months ago that I said Deontay Johnson was going to Carolina. I believe that Brandon Ayuk, I saw that from rumors. I thought about that too a couple of months ago. If I was Carolina, I would go get Brandon Ayuk and Deontay Johnson and even Odell Beckham and have four great, really good wide receivers out there saying what that way he can, they can get open quick and he can get the ball out quick. And then we can play action behind that and he can be able to run around like he can because he's very athletic and make plays. But him holding on to the ball like he Caleb Williams and Pat Mahomes, that's not how he should be playing in the NFL. You got to have him some easy throws and then take your shots. That's why I, I love Deontay Johnson. Uh, Jerry says, how about bounce back for Cooper Cup? I thought about putting him on there. I believe he will have a bounce back, but Puka Nakua then came, and I guess I would say this, he didn't stole his girlfriend. Uh, no pun intended, just as far as um, using a metaphor. He stole his, like, he got the sauce. He's the new hot guy in high school. Pause. He's the guy, oh, who's this guy from the new school? I mean, he, yeah, he, he getting all the girls now. That's what Puka Nakua is, but that don't mean the Cooper Cup still ain't gonna fit, be number two in um King uh prom queen a uh, king queen prom right? He still could be number two. He could still be most popular. So Cooper Cup still gonna be a good value. He's still gonna be top twelve. But I don't believe that he's gonna you know. And that's not nothing for Cooper Cup. But I love Cooper Cup. I love that you brought that up because I I almost did him. But it was a few other guys that I wanted to talk about over him. But I love Cooper Cup, man. He is gonna have a solid season. I, that's why I love Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford is one of my sleeper quarterbacks of the year. I'm taking Matthew Stafford going by, guys. Matthew Stafford has a chance to win MVP because he, he, the, this the, the offense flows through him. The offense flows through Matthew Stafford. So when they get down there, Kyle Williams ain't got to get a carry. They're gonna say Matthew, what you make the call? If you want to throw it, you can throw it to Cooper Cup. You can throw it to Puka, or you can go ahead and give it to Kyle. So I love I love that offense this year. This team is going to be really good in the NFC this year. Really, really good team. Stan Steese is true. Jamar Chase production work, wasn't worth a first-round pick. No, it wasn't. But I'm not going to sit here and try to say, like, because I told people not to draft him this year because of this offense kind of looked choppy. But I'm not going to sit there and take no victory lap over there. That was, a, that, was, that was just – it happens. It happens. You can't get upset. If you took Jamar Chase – I'm not, I wouldn't tell you that you made a mistake. Now, if you watch my content and you're trying to follow my content, that's on you. But I understand Jamar Chase is not a bad first-round pick. But, um, yeah, he just didn't hit. And that happens sometimes. I hit a couple teams that I didn't make the playoffs in. I just I drafted Justin Jefferson in one league. I didn't make the playoffs. What I supposed to do? There's nothing I could do. I, I, I think I had a great fantasy season. See, a lot of people don't understand that. You so If you be so much on the results that you won't be able to, to win, it's just the same way in life. Ah, oh well, well, uh, I only got I only got eight thousand dollars in my bank account, and other people got forty. It don't matter. It's what you got planned. You got to keep doing what you're doing, and eventually you'll break through. You got to get better, get better, and sometimes stuff happens happens bad. Sometimes you can invest into a, a stock and it don't hit. It's okay. Keep it moving. Money can be made again. Opportunities cannot be made again. Opportunities come once in a lifetime, but money keep flowing. Boom! You can be broke today. And you have five thousand dollars tomorrow. That's just the way money is. So you got to keep it moving. You can go get money. You can go. So you can go pick. It's gonna be another year in fantasy. Don't be mad that you took Jamar Chase. Ah oh, man, I, it killed me. No, you you took a good player. Just trust the process. Just be okay with going down with the ship. That's why I always tell y'all go down with the ship. If you like Jamar Chase, go down with the ship. GDLT is definitely loyal. You know the gems, man. Thank you, bro, bro. Thank you. Like I said, I don't always hit. But I, 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 if you put me, if you say, Terry, pick your top 30 players for fantasy and you tell anybody else to pick their top 30, I'm talking about Andy Reid, Bill Belichick, any of them. I think I can hit with them. I think I can hit with them. Uh, Stancy says, hey, bro, we add Jamar Chase to, your, to the list. Yep, he right. I'm one of the 20, loyal to the sword, man. Right. He said, uh, hey, bro, can we add Jamar Chase to the list? Yep, he right. I'm one of the of the 20, loyal to the soul, man. Yep, you is, bro, bro. You is. Um, 
I don't know. I'm not going to add Jamar Chase. He's he got too much value, bro, bro. Those are upper echelon guys. He's a first round pick regardless. Right. These guys are not necessarily first round picks. I want to talk about guys that what everybody wasn't on. That's why I, I did this list, per se. I didn't want to make a list where, you know, um, this easy list. Right. You know, easy. I, I I thought the Jamar Chase, you should take him in the top five. I actually love Jamar Chase this year. I want to take him as the number two pick off the board. Right now, I'm probably taking him before Justin Jefferson. Joe Burrow should have a bounce back season. Now, listen, Joe Burrow makes me a little bit nervous. I want him to be able to stay healthy, and I believe he can. So I love – I think Jamar Chase should, could be top three in targets. Um, He could be top three in receiving yards and touchdowns. I mean, I think Jamar Chase will have a boom season. But that should be easy. Don't get off Jamar Chase because of what he did last year. That has nothing to do with fantasy. Those type of guys, shit like that happens. It just happens. Uh, Harambe says, the subscribers are coming, bro, bro. Keep doing fire content. I know, bro, bro. I know. I know, but you know, I got a lot, you know, and I don't mean, I don't, cause I don't care what anybody says, but I got people that are watching and I can tell that how their attitude goes up and down. Like, hey, you doing any content today? Like, I'm like, uh, I'm we in the off season, but uh, yeah, I might do one. I might do a video. Like a lot of people, you know, but it's all good. It's all good. I'm not going to sit here and give y'all Cooper Cup. And I don't mean no pun intended, but I'm not going to sit here and talk about Jamar Chase and Cooper Cup. And, and spend five thousand dollars on equipment, and 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 sit around here f for five hours and make a video. I, I won't. I won't. I don't want to do YouTube that way. I can't. Now, now, listen. As I get full time doing this, then yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna evolve and try to take my channel to wherever we go. I'm not gonna be stubborn. Y'all are the consumers, but I'm not gonna sit right now with, with me having the job that I got. I'm just gonna give y'all the gas and keep it raw. I think that's makes that's my niche in my channel. That's my mission statement. You know, every business got a mission statement. My mission statement is to give y'all the killer the killer people and try to hit. Um, right now I think I'm 70, 75 percent on all the guys that I talk about. Might not happen right away all the time, but some way they fit in there to be the hit. Not I don't use that out of context where they have one good game. Oh, I hit. I, I try not to be like that, right? But I try to get context with every pick that I like. Appreciate you, bro, bro. Appreciate you. Uh, GDLT says, bounce back for Mooney. I like that. I love that Mooney went to Atlanta. I, guys, you know I've been on Kyle Pitts, and y'all be y'all know when I talk about Kyle Pitts, like, T.D., we can't pick him, but I know you love him. I love Kyle Pitts, and I got him in a lot of dynasty leagues. It's too late to buy low on him now. It's too late to buy low on him now, but I've been on him. I've been on him. Yes, sir. And the and reason why Mooney got paid, because I see – GDLT said he got paid. The reason why he got paid is because they know the potential in him that he can play. I like Darnell Mooney. I like Darnell Mooney. Charlie says, hey, TD, we all, we all march to a different beat. Right. Right. Big Will says, the games when Tyreek was out, Jalen Boone with ease. Right. But I don't think that's something that you should necessarily use as a benchmark. I think um, Jalen Water needs to stay healthy and say he could be part of the game plan. And I believe with them trying to take Tyreek Hill away, Jalen Water is going to be fine. But when Tyreek is out, they kind of got to force feed him. I don't, I don't, I'm not really, I don't think that's like something that I would use as a template. I think the thing is Jalen Water stays healthy. He's a top 12, excuse me, he's a top 12 wide receiver. GDLT says bounce back for Marvin Mims. I believe it. I love Marvin Mims. Uh, I don't know what I, I don't. I wouldn't call it a bounce back because he's a rookie last year. So I just called that he could have a breakout season this year. It could be seven, eight hundred yards. You know, I, I like Marvin Mims. I'm not. I'm, I think you can get him off the waivers after the draft is over, or maybe take him with your last two picks. Charlene says change is good. Everything changes. It's how you ad adapt to the changes that you make you a better person. Right. 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 And listen, I I and I always tell people everybody this, Charlene. I don't tell nobody how to do your draft. I always tell you to go down with your ship. So don't don't ever take my, my in which I'm not saying you do, don't ever take my energy of I said do what I said. Cause that's that's on the bottom of my list. I've never been that type of person. 
I've never been that type of person. So I, go down with your ship. If you want to take Kirk Cousins in the first round of a draft in a single quarterback league, that's fine. No, but, but then later, you I, what I would chastise you about is you'd be like, ah, Kirk Cousins let me down. No, ain't no player. If you if that's a guy you want to go with, that's you go with that guy, and you be okay with it and say, hey, I maybe shouldn't have did it, but that's who I wanted. I won't sit there. I will not chastise you. I just don't. I want people to understand when they pick a person what you're doing and understanding the repercussions of what that can be. Other than that, we all beat to a different drum. Iron sharpens iron, and I'm not trying to convince anybody to do anything that they don't want to do. I just want you to stand on it. My challenge: is stand on what you pick. Stand on it. And that's okay. We all can't be right. Uh, Rami says, would you trade Laporta for Pitts and Dynasty? If I did that, I would have to have Pitts in another piece. Pitts in a second round pick. It's not saying that Pitts won't be better than Laporta, but I just believe the Laporta value right now uh, commands that. You can get Pitts in, a, in another piece. It could be a pick. It could be a player. I don't. Just don't do it straight up. Not right now. Right now, if Porter comes out and has a couple bad games and Pitts is hitting, his value might drop like that. But right now, you can get LaPorta in another piece. You can get LaPorta in another piece. Appreciate everybody who always here. I appreciate everybody keeping it real. Yes, sir, Harambe. Yes, sir. I appreciate everybody keeping it real. I got real content. People that come and watch my content and be for real do have their own opinion. Uh, I remember last year, Charlene told us about Miami defense. I wasn't on Miami defense. She hit. She she helped a lot of my subscribers out, including myself, in a couple leagues where I streamed Miami defense. It was a couple other things that she she had some uh, great ideas on. I'm not above. As long as, every, as long as you were respectful, you speak your mind. We all help each other. I don't know everything, right? But I do believe, like I said, I'm not making content just because I think it's fun. I actually think that I have a gift for watching players, and I always have. It, they, you know, they used to call me Coach Good in high school, and even in middle school, they used to call me Coach Good because I always, I, I wouldn't like disrespect the coach, but I would advise him to do this, to do that. Hey, Coach, we should do this. We should do this, Coach. Uh, guys, I've been knowing how the game. I the way the game is played now. I saw this coming a long time ago. Speed. Speed. We used to play this team, man, and they had speed wide receivers, and we was like running a four four and a wing T, and they used to whoop us every time. And we were stronger and bigger and stronger than they were, but they used to whoop us because we couldn't. Our corner couldn't run with their wide receivers, and then they would give the guys little screen pass, little simple passes, and he'd take it off for sixty. We couldn't tackle him. That's what the game is now. Give it to your guy, get him out in space, and let him take off running. And Andy Reid is great. He's been doing it for years, for over 20 years, where he would give his guys, like Brian Westbrook, give these guys targets, and they outrun everybody and juke people and score. He wouldn't try to push the ball downfield to try to make great throws every time. He always adapted to his quarterbacks. He ain't never had a bad quarterback on his team. Every quarterback that went other places and played bad, they played really well and got a bag from Andy Reid. And so I knew the game was going to be played through the quarterback. Same thing with basketball. The point, everybody always wanted to be the point guard, but the, now the game is played through the point guard. You got to be able to dribble, be fancy, and make the de defense collapse on you and dish it out to a shooter. What nobody, oh, you shoot a lot of threes, y'all suck. The threes always been, you are, that's why I've been a Duke fan. We've been shooting threes for over 30 years. That's how the game, now everybody shoot threes. Duke been playing that. Coach K is a GOAT. Coach K, outside of the overseas league, Coach K, been shoot, his team's been shooting threes for years. That's the you gotta adapt with the game. And I've been on that. People thought I was crazy when by saying that hybrids. I've been talking about hybrids since I started my channel. Go back and watch my go down and go all the way down and watch my early videos. AJ Brown. I was talking about AJ Tyreek Hill. All these little scat backs. I've been on them from the beginning. This is where the offense was going. Appreciate you, Isaac. Right. I do. I do see the game right away. I watched the game. I, I got a great feel for it. Um, I wanted to, guys, I still, my, my ultimate goal, you know, just talking, I want to be a GM. I want to be a GM. I think I could be a GM. 
things that certain GM, certain moves they made, I've been on that. You can't beat speed. You can't. You can't beat speed. You you know, it's you can't. A guy could be less talented. Like Gary Wilson is good. He ain't super fast, but he's good. But you know who who defense is scare? I'm and I'm gonna ask y'all this right now. Everybody in the, all we got 21 people in, in here. Guys, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. Um yeah, so we got 21 people in here right now. So, guys, I'm going to ask this question. Who do you think the defense fears more and game plans more in a regular season game or any game, Garrett Wilson or Christian Watson? So, if you are a defensive coordinator, what who scares you the most? Who are you about? And everybody, I want everybody to answer this question. Garrett Wilson or Christian Watson, who is the defensive coordinator Make what makes him more nervous? GDLT says, How about Tim Patrick? Man, I love Tim Patrick for the last two years, but that last knee injury, I can't, I don't know, bro. It might be over for him. He's the he man, listen, he's not a speed guy, but I don't know if he can come back off those two injuries that he had. So I don't, I, I would say, I doubt that. I, I doubt that. Uh, Big Wilson, do you think Keenan Allen will bounce back, bounce back with Caleb Williams going to the Bears? Assume he's yes. Keenan Allen's still a short guys. He's kind of like Deontay Johnson. Um, he's going to get open quick. That's why. Why you think they went and got him? Didn't I tell you about Deontay Johnson? That's a great comment, Big Will. Reason why Deontay Johnson went to Carolina is because he get open quick. The reason why they they went and got Keenan Allen, he get open quick for Caleb Williams. He's going to get open quick. I like uh, Keenan Allen this year. Now, listen, he might not be healthy the whole season. It doesn't matter. Keenan Allen is going to be a PPR monster. I'm not telling you take him early. Right? We'll figure out the ADP as time goes on. But, yeah, guys, I want to answer that question. Who who does the defense? Now, we know Christian Watson, he drops balls. He he only runs about one or two routes. And Gerald Wilson, got he he's, I mean, impeccable route running. Great ball skills. Um, I mean, he beat Christian Watson in almost every like type of skill set, far as like um route running that type of stuff. He kills Christian Watson, but when it comes to pure raw ability, which the game also embraces that now, speed and uh, I would even call jump balls too. He can't. He can't do that like Christian Watson can. So I, my opinion is Christian Watson, but I want to hear y'all. Who do you think the defense? Um, who who do who do you think the defense is more afraid of, Gary Wilson or Christian Watson? Everybody, put that in. The, put that in the comment comment section. JDLT says you beat speed by having it run into a brick wall, right? But you can't you, you can't have brick walls no more in the NFL. They don't allow that because of concussions. That's why speed. That's why Andy Reid couldn't win a Super Bowl in the old in the old school NFL. He would go play the Pittsburgh Steelers or you know um, all the tough teams, and they would knock his team around. They would knock his team. They would blow his team up. You can't blow his team up no more. You can't hit these guys no more. You have to go and wrap them up around the legs and stuff. So speed wide receivers, they're not scared to go across the middle. And that almost is almost unstoppable. If a guy run a crosser that runs a 4-2, you can't stop that. He's on a linebacker. How are you going to be able to stop that? So back in the day, they stopped it because I'm. if you catch it, I'm going to punish you. I'm going to knock your head off. And you can't do that anymore. So I agree with you, GDLT. You stop it by a brick wall, but no more brick walls. Same thing in NBA. You can't foul guys hard anymore. So they're going to have smaller guards now. Big Will says Watson. Yes, sir. I, I agree with that. Stan C says Watson. Right. But we know Gary Wilson is a better wide receiver. We know Gary Wilson is a better wide receiver, but that's why speed kills. Marvin, what's going on, Marvin? Glad to see you, brother. He says Watson. I agree. But everybody think, ah, oh, Watson, he sucked. Da, 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 da. Like, like, I'm not looking at the game that way. <laughs> 
I'm not looking at the game like, yeah, if you ask me to, who going to run a better route, it's going to be Garrett Wilson nine times out of ten. But scares the, if I'm a defensive coordinator, I please put Gary Wilson out there because we're going to try to bump and run him a little bit and we're going to flow the defense. And and hopefully if I got a good corner, you know, Sauce Gardner going to be able to run with uh, him, even though they're on the same team. Sauce Gardner can't run with Christian Watson. He can't run with him. And he's way, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and Christian Watson is not that skilled at all. Charlene says, I like Debo Salmon this year. I like Debo, but I don't know if he can stay healthy, Charlene. I think, I think Debo is never going to be a healthy wide receiver. I think you gotta you gotta get the, the boom out of him when you can. So you gotta draft him at the right spot where he might miss a couple of games and you sh- you shouldn't be worried about that. And I know you don't because you know how to play fantasy. You don't worry about guys going down. You know that's part of the game. But that guy's kind of like a he's on a higher injury side, and that's what I'm gonna have in my draft guy. I'm gonna tell you certain guys that are good. But you just got to be ready to draft that guy with an injury, with injury upside. He got a lot of injury. He just is the way he plays the game. And it's okay. Because when he's out there, uh-oh, he's going to boom. GBLT says, true, yep, about this brick wall. Watson, right. Right. Big Wheel says, do you see Quentin Johnson making a jump since Keenan Allen and Mike Williams are gone? Yes, I do. I don't know how big of a jump, but it's going to be okay. It's, it's worth a pickup. I'm not listening. Buy low on him. Go give a third or fourth round. I'd rather have him than some of these third or fourth round guys. Then listen, there's a lot of good wide receivers in this draft. But if you got multiple third round picks or something like that in Dynasty, go go trade for him. Pick him up at the end of your redraft leagues. That's what I've been doing in my mock drafts. Like, remember how I got, you know, and I'm not sitting around and, you know, y'all remember how you was like, ah, man, Quentin Johnson ain't that good, but I took him as my last pick. I'm, I'm doing. Him and Trey Burks. Excuse me. I'm taking him and Trey Burks with my last uh, couple picks. Dollar Bill, y'all. What's up, bro, bro? Always showing support to the channel. Always. Appreciate y'all guys. I really do. Appreciate you. GDLT says bounce back Tank Dale. I wouldn't call him a bounce back. I call him just he got injured. That's all. He's a rookie. Bounce back, I will say more what well, the way I'm using bounce back, because you're right, Ripper, those are bounce back guys. But the way I'm using bounce back is more like guys that didn't hit their ceiling yet last year with non big injuries. Guys that had injuries, that's kind of just, you know, they're gonna um they're gonna um I don't know. I, I I would just say the guys that had injuries, that's not a really a bounce back in my opinion because that they had an injury. But guys that played 14, 15 games and had a lot of – had a worse year than they had the year before, I would call those bounce back. Like Jalen Waddle, the year before he had a better season. Uh, Kristen Watson, the year before, even though he was a rookie, he had a better season. Deontay Johnson uh, had a bad season um, and had a good season before the end. Um, Chris Godwin, he hit at the end, but he still didn't have a season that we thought come being two years off the knee injury. And Jalen Waddle didn't boom as much as, as we wanted him to. Yeah, yeah. And I good you right, they all bounce back, guys. I just I'm just looking at it differently. I'm just being more giving you clarity of what I'm trying to say, trying to clarify. All right, guys. I guess I'm gonna get ready to get out of here. Guys, thank y'all for tuning in. I appreciate everybody being here. Guys, make sure you get ready for that draft guide. If you are a phenom, then listen. If you are a phenom crew and you stay on the phenom crew throughout the season, you get the draft guide free. Now, listen, if you unsubscribe from the phenom thing, then I, you won't have access to that. And I will be changing data on that, you know, because things will change. A couple things. Not like the draft guide before the, the uh, season starts, but stuff. The Rangers app during the season, things that I want to switch up because things are changing during the season, you won't be able to have access to that. But if you're on a Phenom crew, guys, I'm going to give it to you to draft guide for free. Phenom crew is $20 a month. Everybody else is going to get a discount if you want, if you are a member. You're going to get a discount according to your tier. $24.99 is the draft guide. Also, I'm out offering consultations, a draft con- consultation which is $80, but if you go and you buy the draft guide 
and you get the consultation for the for the whole draft then that's a set that's 75 dollars. so i'm gonna sit there with you for two or three hours tell you who you should be picking depending on how long your draft is and i got you now if you're in the dynasty league um you can just can hit me up when you're on the clock and we'll finish that draft you just got to send me a screenshot of where you had at the draft at the time so guys i got you i got i'm offering some great things i want to be with you guys when y'all drafting that way i can go down with the shit with you because if some of you pick players and i'll be like you like titty what i need to do i'm like bro i wouldn't have picked that player but sometimes you pick a player and and he don't hit that i told you i can take say listen that's on me that's on me so that's why i want to do this guys i really want y'all to be able to win i won like i said i won four or five i, I was in four or five championships this year i won four of them um so i want to be able to make sure y'all are winning guys and say so we can get this money i want people to i want this money to change our lives i know that may sound a little um crazy but i really want us, us i want my channel to be have the best league winners uh that it is in fantasy football i want us winning big time money on DraftKings and FanDuel. charlene says a wide receiver can have all the talent in the world but you don't have a quarterback throwing in the ball a wide receiver talent becomes useless. I look at how many targets he gets. Right. Right. But sometimes targets doesn't um, match because Tyreek Tyre Hill was never a, um, a great target guy. He didn't become a great target guy until he got to uh, Miami. Um, and also quarterback does matter. Like Justin Jefferson might not have Kirk Cousins. I'm still drafting him, but I'm not going to draft him over Jamar Chase because Jamar Chase got a better quarterback. So you're exactly 100% right about that. Quarterback does matter. But there's some guys that can play through that, but you don't want to take that in fantasy early. Now, you could take that late and get, you know, he might boom a couple games with a bad quarterback, but don't draft uh, a guy with a bad quarterback situation and think that he's going to be consistent every week. It's not going to happen. So Charlene, exactly, she's exactly right, guys. But I don't pay attention to targets. There are guys that are very, very efficient with less targets. Like Tyreek Hill, he was getting six targets, five targets a game in Kansas City and was booming. Um, Tank Dell is a low target guy. Uh, it's a couple other guys out there. Christian Watson is a low target guy. Now, your phenom guys, your first and second round guys, they all get targets. They all get elite targets. So you you can follow if they're getting. 10 targets a game, they're usually going to be a top 12, top 24 guy most of the time. But there are a few guys, maybe five guys that can boom with five or six targets a game. Like Debo don't get a lot of targets, but he get he, get, he makes up for it with the rushing game. Um, so there's a few guys like that. Devontae Adams is going to be a target guy. You're right. Devontae Adams is going to be top 10 in targets. I like Devontae Adams. Great, great value this year. He's going real late. He's going real late. I, guys, you can get Devontae Adams as your third wide receiver. Uh-oh. As your third wide receiver, guys. Guys, make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe to this channel. Let's get the likes up. All right. So, guys, I'll see y'all later. Y'all be safe. Peace. Turn me up, they don't want no smoke, I'm in my bag, bitch, I'm rolling up, they say this shit hot, hot, bitch, I'm burning up, yeah, let's talk some business, ain't no money, I ain't showing up, don't know how to act a bunch of country niggas pulling up, okay, turn me up, now they say they want that country shit, okay, now turn me up, now they see I be that energy, I make them turn me up, yeah, I know they trying to finish me, but it just turn me up, turn me up, fresh to death on camouflage, Gotta keep a foot up on their necks cause they might sabotage. I ain't come for peace, I brought the mask, brought the terrorize. Step, step. If you a hating nigga, keep that bullshit to yourself. Get my bop on you niggas. Don't never question if I'm a real nigga. I get a lot for you niggas. Bitch, they thought I would finish, but I got a lot for you niggas. Little John on them niggas. I'm the bra on them niggas. I'm the hottest in the business. Okay, put me in the meat.